Welcome everybody to the 7 Minute Breakthrough Revolution. Our topic for this week is about education. You see, while I was preparing for this talk, I noticed that I have no idea on the new <laughs> skills on teaching and education in general. So I contacted one of my dear friends, Farah Amba, who is a teacher and she just finished her master's on... Gifted education. Gifted education. So how education is a gift. She's going to talk to you guys today about six main factors that people need in general, whether they're teachers, parents, or if you have your own business. These six factors will help you um, convey the message that you're trying to convey. So take it off, Farah. So as a student, I hated math. I hated math so much. Uh, every year, every teacher would give us the same methods teaching algebra, fractions, divisions, multiplications. But then along came Mr. Eglinton and he started uh, teaching us algebra through coloring, uh, drawing, and singing. And because of that, his fiery personality, his passion, I was able to ace every single quiz and test wow. and exam that year. Genius. So when I grew up to be a teacher, I realized that you needed qualities, specific qualities, in order for you to boost your students' achievement. And uh, sum them up in six main ones. The first one uh, to be enthusiasm. It's very contagious and children are impressionable. So they observe you. If you don't have that enthusiasm in you to teach what, you, what you're teaching, if you don't like it, if they don't see it, they're not gonna be excited about it either. They're not gonna learn anything. So make sure you are enthusiastic about your subject, about what you're trying. Even if you're a parent, be enthusiastic in what you're teaching your children. Uh, two, creativity. Be spontaneous in class. Um, the school needs structure every single day, and it's good, structure is good, but at the same time, you don't want them to be bored. You have to have some kind of spontaneity in the classroom, in teaching. So for example, let's say in English, for teaching grammar, I'll take them outside, have them do like a competition between groups, reordering sentences like a maze and you know tagging each other. Mm. So it's fun to learn grammar that way. As well as be creative in the way you discipline the children. Um, in my classroom, instead of just deducting grades or having someone stand up facing the wall, lifting one leg, mm -hmm. that's all not a good way to discipline your children. Uh, I use a trophy. The most well-behaved group would have the trophy on their, on, on their table. They mm. know that they're not taking the trophy home, but just the fact that the trophy is on their table means a lot to them. So just be creative with the way you mm. discipline them. And the more you're creative, the more they look at all the effort that you're putting into teaching them, they will respect you more. Yeah, and creativity is not just necessarily like in a form of art yeah. or poetry or music. It could be in anything you can create, right? Exactly. Like as a teacher. Like exactly. Uh, third of all, it's balance. As a parent, if you have more than one kid, uh, you would know that not all of them are the same. Not all of them like the color red. Not all of them like to dress in a certain way or go to certain places. Mm -hmm. So imagine a class of 25 children and a teacher is doing teaching the same method to all of these students. It won't work because you have to have balance in the way you instruct the kids in order for you to reach those different learning styles. Mm. So you need balance. Uh, four is compassion. A teacher should be understanding. Um, you should show them generosity, um, kindness. And again, like I told you, they're impressionable. So if, you're, if they're seeing what you're doing, they will apply it. Basically, you're, tr you're starting to build a vision in, in that child of how people should be treated. Mm -hmm. They will learn from you. And five is uh, humor. Humor. Yeah, being funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> even if you're not a funny person, research a joke, at least. <laughs> Just something. Put and the effort. <laughs> put the effort into being funny. Uh, sometimes I don't get what the children are saying, so I have to understand what they're into and what they're not into. So I try to be funny. Like, I don't like football, and I try to get in the joke sometimes. Mm. But yeah, uh, for example, second graders uh, with their career, it was a class about career and jobs and everything, I cut out their faces, I asked them to bring me their pictures and place them on the career that they want. Let's say someone wanted to be a pilot, his face is on a pilot, a policeman and so on. So when they saw the pictures, they thought it was hilarious and related the picture with the job and started remembering all the jobs and careers. Uh, the last one, number six, is appreciation. 
teachers sometimes forget to show that they they're they're, they're very appreciative for example mm -hmm. sometimes the most of the time teachers only send notes back to the mothers or the parents in general mm -hmm. uh, saying that the children is misbehaved mm -hmm. he's talking in class he didn't do well in the exam mm -hmm. but we forget to send a note to say thank you for raising your child to be in a certain way and it's really good to have the parents on your side so it's, it's <laughs> like you're you're asking them you're telling them that their child is good they'll be more tolerant with you They'll yeah. understand if you forget something one day, they won't be on your back all the time. And it'll motivate them too, if, if they're doing a good job yeah. and people are seeing that their job has been yeah, appreciated, they'll actually motivate them, especially if it comes from a teacher. Since most of the messages parents get is, is, is mostly negative or limiting for the child. You'll be appreciated from yeah. the parent and the child for appreciating the parent and then it's like a... Yes. Ecosystem of appreciation. <laughs> I love that. That's yeah. a great idea. Um, so can I just recap all six for the viewers, please? Uh, so the excellent six are enthusiasm, creativity, balance, compassion, humor, and appreciation. There you go, guys. There you have it. Try these things out on a weekly basis with your children at home, with your friends, at work if you're starting a business and um, see what the outcome is because I think these are really really powerful points yeah. um, thank you so much Farah thank for you. this amazing interview it was fun I learned so much and uh, it'll teach me also if one day I'm a parent or a teacher I'll um, appreciate teachers I'll appreciate <laughs> teachers way more after today I promise you that um, just before we leave I'd like to share with you guys that we're hosting a workshop next month in Dubai on the 8th of April at the Rove Hotel and it's gonna be called Metamorphosis and it's basically three stages we're gonna take you guys through a journey and experience the first stage is the caterpillar phase it's where you get clarity and dig deep into yourself the second phase is the cocoon phase where most of the people are usually stuck and they don't usually break through out of the cocoon and then the third phase is the butterfly phase, which is all about taking action and jumping into that world and flying and diving into your full potential. Thank you so much, guys. If you have any questions regarding our topic today or Life Talks Live in general, please contact us on our website, um, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram on Life Talks Live. If you have any questions for the amazing Farah, you can just send us an email or we'll put our contacts on the, underneath this video. Thank you so much, guys, and stay awesome.